HBC Digest, uh, welcome back. Uh, recent weeks have had uh, a lot of positive developments with HBCUs and, and corporate partnerships. And Norfolk State uh, is at the heart of one of the biggest announced ones, a new partnership with Netflix that'll help students and faculty to become uh, more integrated with their workforce development pipeline, their training and skills building. And today, uh, one of the, the products, a, a proud Norfolk State University graduate uh, working with Netflix, uh, is going to talk to us about the opportunities that can come about from a partnership like this. Michael Chase is a senior software engineer in Netflix animation technology division. And Michael, it's a pleasure to have you on today, my man. Yeah, super excited. The honor is all mine. Tell us a little bit about your your view of of, of this this program. Oh, and we're, and we're happy. We got uh, Dr. Patricia Mee. She is the profession chair uh, of the Department of Engineering at Norfolk State University. I thought she was firewall, but she's in. Dr. Mee, good morning to you as well. Good morning. And uh, yeah, I feel good now that I figured out how to get past that firewall. I, <laughs> no one for Pat. You'd expect um, nothing less from an engineer, how to hack the, how to hack yeah. the network on your campus. Um, we were asking, we were asking Michael um, about his view of this, this partnership with Netflix and what it really speaks to in terms of opportunities for students and alumni <laughs> like you who go from an HBCU to a major company like this. What, it, what is it? What does this kind of partnership mean? Yeah, you know, it, it really, really means a lot. Um, I think uh, it's something that I definitely um, uh, wish I could have had while I was at Norfolk State. Uh, although the, I will say that the programs that Norfolk State has are always amazing um, and do a really good job at serving the students. This program, honestly, is nothing short of groundbreaking. And I really believe that Netflix is stepping up as a leader and showing these companies um, out west like, hey, there's great talent at these schools, at these HBCUs and places like Norfolk State. Um, and I think the students are really gonna enjoy it and gonna get some good insight and good information. And it's gonna set them up for, for a very successful career and future. Um, so yeah, very excited about it. Dr. Mead, this is, the, the partnership is gonna be constructed like a boot camp starting in January of next year. Um, right. And this is going to go for a number of weeks and there's going to be a, a, a plethora of opportunities to learn coding, to learn engineering. Yes. What, what kind of how valuable is that for Netflix to provide that kind of knowledge base on campus to faculty and students that you otherwise probably it would be difficult to even pay for that or to pay somebody to come in and teach that? How much does that mean to the campus? Well, I mean, it's it's actually, uh, as Michael just shared with you, it is highly innovative and groundbreaking. Uh, as a faculty member who actually spent a little time in, in industry and then came back and recognized the disconnect between the classroom and industry, um, then that but that happened several years ago. Uh, I have to tell you that the the experience that our students will have in this boot camp is uh, highly unique, very innovative, and um, I cannot put a price on it. I'll put it to you that way. In some ways, I've kind of thought of this as a reality instruction. Um, <laughs> it's the real world uh, brought to the classroom and married in a way that both preserves the academic rigor while at the same time giving you the practical insight. Um, the, uh, the component that, well, the work that's gone into actually constructing the course you can't you can't you can't put a, a price on that. That that's just invaluable. And then uh, to have the access to mentors while they're in this school in this course, as well as uh, the third partner is going to provide some significant career service uh, support to our students once they leave the course uh, to market themselves and to get those opportunities in the real world that they're trying to get to. So I I can't put a price on it. I can only tell you that in many in many ways this is something that I've dreamed about. And my dream has come true to some extent. So uh, this is something that I, I can't I can't tell you how excited I am to be a part of this. Can, can both of y'all speak to? And I hate to do this because I don't want you know it, it's hard enough for Black folks to always have to speak for all Black folks whenever we're in some kind of position of talking. But for the sake of the conversation, why do you think that this the stereotype prevails that it's so hard to break into these major industries and these major jobs? when you're coming from an HBCU. And yet, even without racial unrest, even without political upheaval, HBCUs are still a target for companies trying to find diverse talent and diverse 
expertise? Why? How is it that the people think one thing, but the industries think another? <laughs> Uh, well, I'm going to go ahead and jump in first, uh, Mr. Chase, if you don't mind. Um, Please do. So the research tells us that the number one reason why young people go into the engineering profession, I'm going to speak from engineering, that is my expertise, but I think it's broadly true of STEM, is do they have a family member or some, you know, someone that they have access to that is in that profession? So it starts with what can you see for yourself and the choices that you make highly aligned with what you can see for yourself. If you can't see yourself being successful in a tech career, guess what? You're most likely not going to go into a tech career. And on the on the um, reverse side or on the other side of things, if you don't have any vision or any role model of what certain types of people can achieve and do, guess what? You're going to go with whatever your natural bias is, whatever your parents told you, whatever you see on TV and in the media. Those are the kinds of things that influence our choices and our decisions. So to get out of that, you have to make an intentional choice, an intentional decision that guess what? I'm not going to let that bias rule my action. And so from the perspective of why is it that we still after 40 or 50 years of put underrepresented people, get them to go into STEM. We're still kind of at this place where we haven't achieved a critical mass. We haven't seen the fruit that we're looking for. I mean, there's some there. I mean, I'm an example of it, but it's just not where we want to be. So at some point you have to say, guess what? We have to be an intentional about how we're going to do this. And I think Netflix has taken a very big step forward on this is what intentionality looks like. First of all, we're going to go where we can find underrepresented people. And second mm -hmm. of all, we're going to pave a pathway that gives them a real opportunity including all the resource and access that everybody else would have access to. But these young people may not because they don't know as many people in the field. They don't have as many role models. They don't have as many uh, mentors. So let's let's try to even the playing field just a bit and see what happens next. Yeah. Wow. Um, wow. I feel like you covered most, if not all. <laughs> I think um, I think the one thing that I would add is just that uh, really highlighting this access component that uh, Dr. Mead talked about. You know, it's 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 one thing for for us as individual Black people to say, "Hey, I want to go work at this tech company," but it's a whole nother thing to go from that statement to an interview, even right, or even mm -hmm. having your resume. Uh, in a place where where you can be um, uh, 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 you can compete. Um, and I think there's a lot of work that these companies have to do to to bridge that gap both for us as black people and specifically addressing the barriers that we face to education, the biases we face and being selected for those programs, um, and even some of the environmental factors. Um, you know, I don't want to go off too much on a tangent, but it, it this is way bigger than simply what is some company doing, right? Right. Um, you know, and so we have to we have to take that into account when we're having this conversation. Um, and so I think that what Netflix is doing and why it really makes me proud to work there is we're saying, hey, we know that there are a multitude of factors involved, and so we are going to bring this program to these students and to these people, and we're gonna make it accessible such that you don't even have to pay for it, right? And and that in and of itself is huge. Um, so yeah, a lot, a lot goes into it, but I think, uh, I think that's a big part. You touched on something that was critical, and this interview is gonna be part of my Who's Hiring from HBCU series. And that is the, is it, is it more than a notion to say that companies are getting better about rising above or, or in some cases being more conscious of stereotypes that hiring managers or uh, mid-level uh, officials may have. Because my brother is he locks, facial <laughs> hair, a shirt that says strong black lead. I mean, <laughs> and he's gonna be, and he's gonna get on a Zoom call in like 20 minutes and do his work and do it well. Companies, is it that because Netflix is a company that values diversity, which you can see in its in its products, but is it that that companies have to become more conscious of how we look, how we sound, how we feel, how we act, what's important to us, 
And that is the true measure of diversity, not just bringing in folks to do a job, but that when we get to that job and go into the office or go on Zoom, that we feel a part of it. And do HBCUs have a role to play in companies becoming that much more culturally aware and culturally uh, celebratory of different people? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, it's it's no secret that uh, some companies are doing better than others. Yeah. Um, Netflix has done an amazing job of really ramping up this, even just in my short um, almost three years and working there. Um, all of the talent partners, which is our kind of fancy word for recruiters, um, they get this training, right? They they learn these biases and they seek to understand them, and they're they're held to account for it as well. Um, and so it does play a, a pretty big role in ensuring that when we show up to these interviews, as we as we are, right, and as we should be accepted, um, uh, we can make it through and, and no one is looking at us saying, well, maybe you're not a culture fit or I don't know, maybe you're just not quite what I'm looking for. Um, I, I think to some degree, I can see where uh, HBCUs and other institutions could play a role. But honestly, I think it's really up to to companies to take um, notice of what places like Netflix are doing to make sure that we're looking at these candidates and saying, you are a incredibly intelligent individual and this company would be better off for having you. And that's really it, you know, mm -hmm. as long as the HBCUs are, are doing what they're already doing and, and providing us with a rigorous curriculum and set of skills and knowledge, then really the ball would be in, in, in the company's court. I think I can agree with that. I can agree with that 100%. Um, I was chuckling because when I first came out of uh, grad school, uh, everyone assumed that I was going to get rid of my grub raids. You know, they figured, Oh, you're just doing that because you're in school and you don't really want to hang out, you know, at the at the beauty shop and get your hair done. I'm like, well, first of all, I still have to go get my hair done. <laughs> no, I'm not changing my hair. <laughs> but I decided to go into academe. Uh, I found that there was a coast bias. Now on the East Coast, I think they were a lot more sensitive, but on the West Coast, it was a lot lot op lot more open. Uh, and I, you know, I wonder if that's still the case. I mean, I'm talking about, you know, 15 or 20 years ago, that was the case. Uh, but I think it, I think it is kind of up to the companies to begin to open up their uh, ways of evaluating folks and, uh, you know, trying to understand that you can't, you know, don't get turned off because of, you know, facial hair or braids or whatever your, your hairstyle is. You're, you're trying to find the best talent because you, at the bottom line is you want to make the money. You want to be successful. So, you know, to the degree that you give folks opportunity and they demonstrate that, hey, we're doing just fine. Uh, I think, you know, that's that's kind of what will have to happen. But I, I think uh, Mr. Chase has, has outlined it. I think it's mostly on the part of HR people uh, and how they um, train and educate their workforce. Dr. Mead, Michael Chase, it's been an honor to speak with you. Uh, we look forward to many of the exciting developments that are uh, going to come out of Norfolk State with this partnership with Netflix. And uh, to your point, how a lot of the other companies will adjust to see what Netflix is doing and working to, to making that same thing possible for other HBCUs around the country. We appreciate your time today. Thank All you. Right. Well, thank you.